Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Coaching from the Couch. This is your host, C. Wall. I'm going to give you all an opportunity to get on in the virtual room. Yet another Thursday. We have made it, haven't we? Yes, indeed, we have. And oh, what a Thursday it is. Some of you all may, may have seen me earlier today. I was with some of my DC sports media colleagues virtually with Donna Hopkins of Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus and with Lake Lewis of Sports Journey. They joined me from training camp earlier. So we definitely had some a lot of Washington football discussion earlier today. So if you haven't seen it, you, you want to go and check that out for sure. Um, I feel like I absolutely still have to have a Washington football update on this show because this is the rundown of all DC sports. Um, as you all know, I like to share uh, a quote, a saying that I just love to always mention, and that is, when is a dull moment in DC sports? And that would be never, because um, if, as you all know, there's a lot going on right now in DC sports. So much going on in DC sports, I don't even know where to start. Um, like seriously, I know that we always have a kind of run of show, right? Where we start with the Mystics, but we know the Mystics aren't playing until mid August. Um, we'll go through Caps and Nets and Wizards and then Washington football. And we might still do it that way, we might still do it that way. Um, but it's definitely a lot going on, a lot of trade talks and rumors going. So we shall see, as we always say, there's never a dull moment in DC sports. It's so much going on. I see Damon has already checked in, huge Washington football fan. Um, let me go ahead and put this um, comment up there. They're moving through so fast. John Adams has already shared. It's just a depressing day in DC sports. And while you are saying that, listen, John, let us know in the comments why, why you feel like it's a depressing day in DC sports. But I see, of course, Seawall team member Joy. She has joined and you know that she always monitors the chat. Um, Lawrence Bullard of Team Bullard, welcome, one of our huge supporters. Um, and we just appreciate you for always tuning in and sharing the show. I see you, Cameron Mingo. Um, and and Damon, I see your comment. You were wondering where um, I was going to start. I'm, I'm kind of stalling here because I still don't know. <laughs> we, I, I always have a run of show and it's just not, I don't know. And it's kind of like at this point, we're just waiting right for either major league baseball to make a huge announcement waiting for the nba to make a huge announcement and while we're just waiting for all these huge announcements we do know the nba draft is tonight so any trade news coming there the trade information is rolling in from the major league baseball um with the trade deadline being on saturday july the 31st the trade information is just rolling in rolling in um, as Lawrence Bullard said, there's plenty of sports news today. Absolutely not a dull moment at all. You all make sure y'all say hi to my mama. Say hi, Mama Waller, because she has absolutely checked in. Let me know you all are here. Use your like, your love emoji, just so that we all know that um, we're absolutely in the building um, as Joy is sharing with you all in the chat, D 
definitely make sure you check out that training camp show. It was at about one o'clock earlier today. Again, I was with Donna um, Hopkins and Lake Lewis. So you all want to definitely get that update. We absolutely have additional updates because as you always know, it's never a dull moment. Even after the press conferences and practices are over, there's still other news that trickles out during the day. Um, so let's just say we're going to get started. Let's just say we're going to get started. Here's where I would like to start. I want to start with, can we start with some positive news? I want to share some positive news, right? Positive news, positive news, positive, positive news. You all know that for a few months now, I have been talking about something very important and in particular. I've been saying we need to be paying attention to what's going on with the Washington Capitals and any moves with Alex Ovechkin. Alex Ovechkin will be back. He has locked himself in. The Caps and Ovechkin came through with a dynamite contract extension for him. He will be with the Caps through his 21st year. I think this year is like his 16th season going into his 17th season. So the contract extends him through season number 21. If he goes through 21 seasons, here's a fun DC fact. He will be basically the, the, the longest tenured DC sports figure in the area, having been in town for 21 years. So you all know that I have been really, really anxious to see OV sign and get that contract extension. And they made that happen um, on July the 27th. He's super excited and wants to be here. You know, hey, listen, again, we, let's, let's talk about the positives before we get into all the other stuff. It's rare around here when you see a player get drafted to this town and they stay. They're not traded out. They're not like, hey, get me out. And they stay. And, and I mean, we can talk about, we have a lot, of, lot to talk about tonight, but, you know, I can go on and on about the accolades of Alex Ovechkin. And I won't necessarily do that right now. Um, but you all know, you all know what it is. And you all know that's why I kept talking about it so much because I was worried. I was like, well, what in the world is going on here? Are they going to sign him? And they absolutely did. So kudos for certain. Congratulations to Alexander Ovechkin. And we are so delighted to have him as part of our overall DC family for more years to come. Now, let's move on to the Nats. Has any news come in? Has any news come in? Because we all know how this week started. As you all know, we've been mentioning the last couple of weeks, will the Washington Nationals Will they be sellers or buyers by the trade deadline? The trade deadline is amongst us. The trade deadline in Major League Baseball is this Saturday, July 31st. And all we've been hearing, and it's pretty much set in stone, you all, is that Max Scherzer will be traded out. Um, it's still yet to be determined where he's going to go. Let's just say this. So listen, it started out this week. The Mets were asking around. And everybody was like, okay, they can ask. They can go ahead and ask, right? Now, listen, I might be already jumping around and everything, but the Dodgers are now in the mix. Heavy, 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 heavy for Max Scherzer. Um, the Padres were the front runners, but the Dodgers are still close contenders for Max Scherzer. I don't know if you all saw after the um, noon game today. If you haven't, please check it out. I was going to um, use a clip from the presser and just didn't have time to get, get that particular clip. But today it was kind of all over, it, it was written all over his demeanor, his face and his words. Um, so Max is, Max is out. He, he, he knows he, he's, he's on the, um, on the way out here. 
Um, so I don't know. How do you all feel about this? Um, I definitely want to know your comments on Max Scherzer um, and trade news. Um, and so one of the, one of the great, in my opinion, just one of the greatest huge contributor to the World Series, right? It's like in the back of my mind, it's like, hey, we'll always have the World Series. Absolutely, we'll always have it. Let me see, is this? Yep, still another update here. Um, again, as I mentioned, the Dodgers still in the mix for Max Scherzer. And we said, you know, team, it's a bidding war, essentially. And here's what's a key important point that you all need to know. Max can decide where he goes. He absolutely has the ability to veto any trade so that he can choose his next home. So, I mean, that's good to have that option. But if you haven't already, go check out the press conference from the noon game. Stellar performance from Max Scherzer per, per usual, per most days, right? And um, it was written all over his face. It really was. And it was in it was written all over his face um, in his words. Um, and so it, it, it is what it is, kind of, sort of. Um, as Cameron Mingo says, hey, listen, he did win a World Series with the Nats. Absolutely. We'll always have the World Series time, which was an amazing time. So um, I, I just we all did. Right. All Nats fans, are the Nats fans checked in? Like a love emoji, so I make sure you're you're in the building. Um, but it's just, it's kind of hard when you're a fan. It's still you, even if you're fan media, when you have those moments, it's like, dang, right? Um, to John's point and Joseph Hammond, I see your comment as well. Yes, he could come back after the season, but that's, you know, John trying to be positive. Yeah, you got to be um, positive for certain. Um, he just, the epitome of, of class, epitome of fun. And so I know I'm going to miss seeing him in the Nats uniform. Um, but we'll always have the 2019 season. So it's it's rough. It's rough. John, I see your comment. You understand, but you don't like it. You know, is I, I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is this is all right. This is a lot going on in a little bit of time. And just Give us a minute. And we've been talking about this, right? And the rumor mill gets going. And sometimes you don't know if the rumor mill is accurate, if they just talking. But the rumor, the rumor mill wasn't really the rumor mill in this in this sense. They were they were right. So it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of moments before this gets done, but it's definitely an all out bidding war um, for Max. And I'm actually happy for him about that. Honestly, I think that's fantastic. Now, listen, before we move on to this next topic about the Wizards, because tonight is draft night and we know that the draft starts at eight o'clock. We know that the draft starts at 8 p.m. So we're going to try to get this conversation out because guess what? I am still going to talk about the Washington football team for a bit. So if those who want to get, get with the, the, the draft, trust me, I won't keep you too much longer after the draft starts. But we're definitely going to get into the Wizards. Wizards fans, check in. Check in, Wizards fans. And I do think I saw somebody say that they were drinking. Was anybody having a drink? Is this what DC Sports does to you? Is this what happens? A like a love emoji, please, if you have a drink. If you have a drink right now, dealing with the you-know-who, the Wizards. Check in. Check in, check in, check in, check in, check in. Sherrod, would that be you? Do you have a drink? Of course, Joy is all checked in. I see you, Joseph Hammond. Oh, 
Damon has told us a little bit about himself, you all. He said that he always have, has a drink on these shows. Well, hey, listen, tonight, excuse this. I have to move this, this thing, this picture out of my way. I kind of have a drink myself, everybody. I have a drink myself tonight. I don't do this. I do not do this. My team will tell you I will not drink. And you all know that my mother is watching. She watches every single solitary show. But tonight I had a generous pour, quick plug, for the Black Girl Magic brand, Sparkling Brew. Okay? I have this right here. Yes, I do. So get you some if you haven't already. Got to plug my Black Girl Magic. Y'all know I'm going, Black Girl Magic is drinking Black Girl Magic, okay? Wait a minute, the picture's in the way. Black Girl Magic, okay? Is the glass, I mean, it's kind of big. I was going to say it's not that big, but it kind of is. But that's just how it, to Shiraz's point, and I want everybody to say, it is about transparency. You know, yes, I, I always tell you all, yes, I'm a member of the media all, always, but sometimes the fan slips out and you have to say, you know what? I kind of know how they're feeling. I think I know exactly how, how everybody is feeling right now. And I've had this up on the screen, this picture here about the Lakers. We talked about this last week. Do you all remember? We were talking about this just last week that the Lakers were eyeing Russell Westbrook. And I asked y'all, I said, y'all been hearing about this? Have y'all been talking about this? Because we need to talk about this, a real thing real thing that the Lakers are were definitely absolutely all in on Russell Westbrook as you all can see here's the the deal here um uh, Kyle Kuzma Montrell's um Harrell KCP and a 2021 first round pick now as far as I know we're about 12 minutes out from the draft not certain if it's complete yet not sure if it's complete yet but we'll see. I've left this up here because I'm like, y'all take a look at this. It might really legit happen while we're all talking. How do you all feel about it? Tell me your honest, true feelings about what's being offered and what you all are thinking. I gave, I let it stay up there on the screen for a minute so you all can take a moment and, and check it out. Cameron Mingo has an opinion about this. And Cameron Mingo says, to be honest, this is a win for the Wizards. Cameron believes that this trade is a win for the Wizards. It's a win. John, thank you for that update. I didn't think it was complete yet. Didn't think it was complete yet. I see a comment here from Aaron Smith. Uh, well, I Sherrod, I'm not sure if you were saying yuck to the trade or to Demond drinking vodka, but Aaron Smith said he think he's gone. It was good while it lasted. Hey, listen, it was. I, I think, and I've shared this with you all so many times, that I really thought that Russell Westbrook, being the competitor that he is and had the opportunity to grow over time, he was good for this team, great for this team. Um, just in even in being in a rebuild sort of mode, in a motivation, um, a motive, a motivator, and I was called a motivational speaker, um, someone who was going to bring that um, high character, high work ethic into the building. Somebody who has played at the highest level, you know, an Olympian, a former um, NBA MVP, has you know gone on to you know play like again at the highest level with the, with the NBA finals no he has not won a championship yet but what we saw him do in breaking Oscar Robertson's triple double record you don't just you don't just wake up every day and just because you can play ball break a record like that that is a key indicator of hard work continuing to perfect your craft um, all of those things that are so key when you are trying to be the best. You know, you can have a gift all day long, 
But just because you have a gift doesn't mean you stop trying to perfect your craft. And that's one of the things that I thought was so important in what he brought to the area to specifically the wizards in the organization was that high character, was that hard work ethic, was the, you know, and then the community service, the community building. I remember when, when Westbrook first got to DC, he had already scheduled a community event, right? And I thought it was important that he said, Denny, Rui, let's go, let's go had them out in the community. This is what you do. This is how you give back. When you've been blessed, you got to give back. And, and I just absolutely love exactly what Sherrod is saying here is that he showed those young guys how to prepare. He is the first player that has walked in the door with that type of respect here in some time that has played at the highest level. We, we can't deny that. That's absolutely correct. Can absolutely deny that. So it's only a matter of time. Again, I was trying to drag out that conversation because I said, hey, maybe it'll happen while we're talking. Um, and it'll happen. I mean, it's NBA draft night. So especially if there is a first round pick included in any of the packages for this year, then we absolutely know that that is going to happen um, tonight. So Another thing I want to mention, um, there's conversations and I, and I saw that the athletic they've posted, you know, that Brad doesn't want to go anywhere. Brad wants to stay with the Wizards. He's given no indication that he wants to leave. Um, and I, re I recall Tommy Shepard sharing um, just yesterday that he had talked to Brad and Brad all was well. Brad is happy. Um, Brad wants to stay. Here's what's interesting. Tommy Shepard says something very similar about John Wall. I distinctly remember being on the media um, press conference with Tommy Shepard, and he assured everyone that they were good. They were, they were great. Couldn't wait to get started with the season. That was just a couple, you know, just a couple days away. And then in those couple of days away, John Wall was traded. And I said to myself, hmm, I feel like I've heard this before. Oh, yeah, that's right. He said the same exact thing right before he traded John. Now, I'm going to just, y'all can ha do what you will with that piece of just observation, right? Do what you will and draw your own conclusions there. Um, but what I think also is important to share is that there were reports that Brad and Russ were not engaged in the coaching decisions. And with that being the case, that they were not involved in the coaching decision, then maybe, hey, some folks are like, maybe I don't want to be a part of this. Maybe I have been here too long. And I'm going to ask you all, before we move on to the Washington football team, I'm going to ask you all, if you were Brad, if you were Bradley Bill, what would you do? Seriously, ask yourselves in an objective manner. If you were Bradley Bill, what would you do? Would you requ request a trade? Would you be open to different options? Would you stay and see what would happen? Damon has already answered the question. He said, well, I would want out. Okay, Damon, I see that. I see that, absolutely. Would anybody else care to answer? I see my cousin Sambrina has checked in. And Sherrod is bringing up a good point. Depends on what my end game is. What do I want my legacy to be? You know, Hey, I don't know. Again, if you if you, if it were you and you were Brad, what would you do? What would you want your legacy to be? Every year they rebuilding. Seems like. Now here's a, here's a thought. Here is a thought. If anything, 
this year's NBA championship provided hope, if you will, for those that may feel like you don't want to team up. You know, for those that are kind of from the old school mentality, right? Then you say, I, I, I want to I wanna win. I don't want to team up to win, right? So this year's championship was actually kind of an indicator of that. I think the Bucks and the Phoenix Suns, I said, you know what? This is almost kind of reminisce, you know, reminisce on grow, right? Grow with your team, build with your team. So, you know, hey, then if you look at that, mm, yeah, maybe you would want to stay. Maybe you would. I see Sherrod has answered the question. Now, if it's about a championship, I would have been gone. Well, hey. Now, I see, Russ, I see your comment, and I see a, a couple of your comments. I'm going to put this one on the screen because I see you're going to zip it, lock it, and put it in your pocket because you don't want to say what you really would like to say. And that's fine. I would encourage you to do so if you like, but anyway. No, I won't. That's me being a little messy. But anyway. Yes, Giannis, I'm sure, has threatened to leave. And it worked out for him. Worked out for him in the end this year. So I would just encourage everyone to think in those terms. If you were a part of a process or were told you were going to be a part of a very important process and you were not a part of that process, that could be an issue, potentially. Um, if you've heard the same song, you know, heard it all before, time and time again, and not seeing the result, that could be a thing as well. Remains to be seen if Brad stays. It remains to be seen. I understand what they're saying at The Athletic. I'm, I'm understanding what, what is being shared publicly, but what I'm sharing on Coaching from the Couch on this here Thursday, July 29th, is just look at the clues. We've been through this a lot before. Now, haven't we, DC sports fans? We know what it looks like, and we know what it sounds like, too. Okay? All right. Check in. Check in, everybody. Is everybody still here? Now, I know that the NBA draft is getting ready to come on, and it comes on in two minutes. But, hey, listen, I got the Washington football team up next, and I'm going to talk about them. So if any Wizards fans have to leave us, I totally understand. The Wizards pick 15th, of course, unless they trade to pick away or whatever that, whatever that is you know, today, because that was another thing. The Wizards tried to trade the 15 pick. So it's just a lot going on. Just keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open because who knows, quite frankly, really, you can't even say who, you know, who knows. So Washington football team fans, please check in. Please check in Washington football team fans. So I'm not going to go too much into what Donna Lake and myself talked about earlier today. Did you all see that show earlier today? Check in. I need like and love emojis. Like and love emojis. I want to. I want to see that. I want to know if you all watched the show earlier today. You know, just so that you all know if you haven't heard, if you haven't seen it. Um. We're doing this all training camp. I'm doing a show just about every single day of training camp. Um, and you want to tune in because every day, shortly thereafter, the press conferences are done, going to go live, go down the update of everything that had happened that morning and what's shared in the press conferences. And sometimes I will absolutely have, as you all saw today, I will absolutely have my colleagues that are out there live joining me. So I absolutely want you all to check it out. Absolutely want you all to check it out. Um, always some great information shared. I think overall, some of my key takeaways, I still want you to go check out the show, but some of the key takeaways is, hey, it's just day two. It's just day two. Um, can't get too excited about anything because it's day two and they haven't even they haven't even put on the pads yet. Now, tomorrow they're going to put on the pads. 
they gonna start putting on the pads tomorrow. So we can we can you know start start getting into it when the pads come on. But like I was sharing with folks, uh, and like we said earlier today, still very early, only day two. You probably start mm, maybe about practice eight through ten. When you get about midway through, you start saying, okay, what's going on here? What's happening here? Who's really budding? Who's really shining? Um, and you you try to make calls based on that. There is a lot of excitement around just being back outside. Of course, there, and while there's excitement, there's still many restrictions as well. Um, because of the low vaccination of players, um, you may see some of the players are still um, wearing masks. And we all know that if you are wearing your mask, that is absolutely a, a guiding, um, a, a kind of guiding factor or some of the guidelines that the NFL has shared that unvaccinated players must wear their mask, you know, on the sidelines, also in the building. So you'll see a lot of mask wearing out there from players um so you you know it's it's still good to be back as i can tell and what i've been hearing but it's also still very different because it's, it's not the same you know this is definitely a new normal situation um and that kind of is what it is so um we'll continue to see uh we talked a bit about the position battles that um that uh, Donna and Lake were interested in. Joy has put a note here that is very important. Sherrod, the originated article on Washington football team is posted. Sherrod is going to be sharing more articles and we'll have more up there. Um, Damon, if you tune in to the show that we had yesterday on training camp, we absolutely went into pretty in a lot of depth um, on Ron's comments on the non-vaccinated players. Terry McLaurin shared his comments as well, as did Jonathan Allen. Both of them um, openly shared that they are vaccinated. Logan Thomas, um, Chase Young, they shared, you know, that they do not want to share their status, uh, their vaccination status. But hey, across the board, they are in agreement that it's, it's folks, you know, that it's their, it's their decision. And everyone will respect everyone's decision. Um, but as we continue to talk about um, COVID, now the team's got some players on the COVID list announced this evening. So this wasn't announced earlier. Now you see Matt Ioannidis' name there. We all know that Matt Ioannidis, when he was not on the active roster, dealt with COVID last year. Matt his, is now on the um, COVID-19 list. We do know that he had left practice early. So now it, it, it wasn't like he was injured or anything, but now I think we, we can, you know, connect those dots on why um, he left early. You see um, corner Chris Miller, as well as wide receiver Curtis Samuel, also now on the reserve COVID-19 list. So this will continue to be a conversation. Um, with even these three players being out there. It will be interesting to see who can't be out there, not because they necessarily tested positive, but maybe they came in close contact with one of those three players. And now it's, you know, this is kind of what they gotta do um, to be safe. So we'll see if even this situation prompts more players on the team to get vaccinated because as I shared yesterday and is still the case today, the Washington football team now has the lowest number of players that are vaccinated. So wanted to share that still more to come. This is going to be a, a, a good training camp season. I think it's going to be solid. I think it's going to be good. Hopefully there's not, too many of these breaks due to COVID, um, but it remains to be seen. So listen, I did want to share a couple of things um, about like just some videos that I saw. And I was like, oh, I 
like this video. So I wanted to share you all. Of course, on day one, who doesn't like a good Chase Young video? Who doesn't like that? That's right. You got to enjoy a good a good Chase Young video. I mean, nobody nobody gets tired of seeing Chase. Now, here was the other thing that came up. Landon Collins. Landon Collins don't look so bad. Let me see if I can play this again. Landon Collins looks like he's recovering well after his Achilles injury. Let me play this again because I'm looking at it while y'all are looking at it too. I was like, oh, doesn't even look like he was really injured. I enjoyed that. Now, listen, if you all haven't seen this video, I had to watch this video about 10 times. One, because I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And then two, because I really like the song. Y'all, listen, when have you ever like literally ever see a team president say, I'm going to go ahead on, this is my song, and I'm going to go ahead on and hold my ice cream and do this electric slide right fast before we, before I leave for the day. I, I watched that video, I know, about 12 or 13 times, and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I, and I even got my own little two-step out before the show and everything. Because, you know, I got to be serious here. But I was like, you know what? That's all right, Jason. And I like that song, too. I like, I like Outstanding. That is a very good song. It's one of my father's favorite songs. But anyway, listen. Y'all, we made it. Another week. We absolutely made it, you all. Cheers, DC sports fans. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. See, I didn't drink it. I didn't drink it at all. And I knew I wasn't going to drink it, but I'm going to drink it in a moment. <sighs> More to come, as always. Absolutely never a dull moment in DC sports. It just never is. So, hey, listen. We'll wait for the Westbrook news to be official. We'll wait for the Max Scherzer news to be official. We'll see what Brad does. And um, we'll keep updating on training camp tomorrow. Training camp show. So y'all going to see a lot of me during training camp. And here's, and here's a clue. Here's a hint. You might be seeing more of me during the regular football season as well. But at any rate, during training camp, you absolutely will be seeing more of me because even if there's not much to update and check in on, we're going to do a check in. So today we got the times off a little bit. Tomorrow, I hope we got the times a little closer to, to right. So we're targeting one o'clock instead of one thirty. So one o'clock, be on. Let's try to make it happen. More to come. Watching the football team in, in pads tomorrow, day three of training camp. So I would say I will see y'all next week, but actually I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. So you all have a great night. See you tomorrow.